Good morning. Don't you know that many math problems can be solved by slicing? As in, slicing your bread or slicing your apple. For example, if I want to find the volume of this apple, that would be difficult because the shape of the apple is irregular. This is not a perfect sphere. But if there is a way for us to slice the apple into smaller disks like this, and sum up the volume of all these smaller disks, then the sum of the volume of all these pieces would be equal to the total volume of this apple. In other words, we are employing divide and conquer. Also, suppose you have this shape and you want to find the area of this. That would be difficult because there's a curve here. This is not a perfect rectangle or a shape whose area we already know. But if there's a way for us to slice this into smaller rectangles like this, and if there's a way for us to sum up the areas of all these smaller rectangles, then the sum of those smaller areas would be equal to the area of the region that we would like to find the area of. That is precisely the concept behind one of the pillars of calculus which we call as integration. For today, we will not jump to the formal studies of calculus yet, but we will have a glimpse on the thinking process behind the derivation of some area formulas, and you will later discover that Sir Isaac Newton and Wilhelm Leibniz, the inventor of calculus, employed the same thinking process when they invented the science of fluxion, which we now call as integration. So today, we will focus our attention first on exploring quadrilateral and formulating areas of parallelogram, rhombus, kite, and trapezoid, all by the technique which we call as slicing, divide, and conquer. So let's begin our exploration. So we have here a square, a rectangle, rhombus, trapezoid, isosceles trapezoids, parallelogram, and kite. All of these are quadrilaterals. We start with something that we are familiar with. So we know the formula for the area of a square, so we have no problem with that. The area formula for a square is area equals side squared. Where this length is the side, that length is the side. And for our interpretation of the area of the square, it's the number of square units that we can use in order to cover the space. In our case, we now say that the area of this is one, two, three, four, four square units. Now for rectangle, it's A equals the length times the width, where this is the length and that is the width. And for our interpretation, the area of the rectangle is also, again, the number of square units that we can use to cover completely the rectangle. So in this case, we now say that the area of this rectangle is six square units with this one as the square unit. And we can also get that six by multiplying the length of three and the width of two. No problem with rectangle. Now what happens if we have a parallelogram? How can we cover this with square units? If we try doing it like this, then there is that part that cannot be completely covered by a square unit. This is now where our slicing come in. So what we're going to do is, we are going to cut, this is the parallelogram, they have the same shape. We are going to cut the parallelogram along this line, perpendicular from one vertex to the opposite side. So let me cut it now. We have this parallelogram originally, and we cut. And after cutting, we can move this here, and now, we have a rectangle. So, from parallelogram, we cut and then transform into a rectangle. So the area now of this rectangle is this length times that height, which still the length times the width. So, it's still the same area, only the shape changes. And by changing the shape, we are not throwing any part, the area still the same. We did not change the area, we just changed the shape. But by changing the shape, we are able now to find the area because we can now completely cover this new shape with, with the square units. We therefore now say that if we have a parallelogram, we can find the area of the parallelogram by just multiplying the base. The base is this length times the height from this vertex perpendicular to the opposite side. So area 
equals the base times the height. So that's how we find the area of unknown shapes, at least unknown for the moment, and by connecting that with shapes whose areas we already know. For example, for parallelogram, we do not know the formula yet, but by slicing, we can transform that into a rectangle. And once we have a rectangle, we know how to find the area of a rectangle. It's the length times the width. In the notation for parallelogram, instead of length, we call it base. Instead of width, we call it as the height. So that's now the formula for parallelogram. Let's move to the next shape. If we have a rhombus, a rhombus is a special kind of parallelogram. Because when we say parallelogram, we have two pairs of opposite sides parallel each other. So this side is parallel to the other side. So this side is parallel to the other side. This rhombus is also a parallelogram. But as a special case of parallelogram, this rhombus has all its sides equal. Whereas in general parallelogram, as long as the opposite sides are parallel, there is no restriction about the length of the sides. But for rhombus, it's a special case of this parallelogram. Now to find the area of this rhombus, we can also employ the same technique. What we can do is we can cut following this line that is perpendicular to the other side. And then from this rhombus, we transfer that triangle to the other side, and now we have a square. And since we know the formula for the square, we know the formula for the area of the rhombus. For the rhombus, this is the base, and that's the height. So the same formula, area is base times height. Now, what if we have this trapezoid? How are we going to find the area of this trapezoid? Notice that even if I cut it here perpendicularly, there's no way for us to put this other triangle on the other side and we can get a perfect square or a perfect rectangle. Now this time, the technique that we're going to use is double this trapezoid. Come up with another trapezoid that is exactly the same, that's congruent to the original trapezoid. And what we can do is flip this like this and flip this like this. And now you have a parallelogram. So this side is parallel to the other side, this side is parallel to the other side. And we know how to find the area of a parallelogram. The area of parallelogram is A equals the base times the height. But our original trapezoid is only this yellow. And this yellow is only one of the two parts. So we therefore say that if this is the area of the parallelogram, this parallelogram that we have now here. For the original trapezoid, it's only one half of that. For the trapezoid, the area should be one half base times the height. But I would like you now to look at the base. So we said this is the base. What is now this base from here going to that and from here going to that? If we call this yellow base as base one and this green base as base two, this base that we have here, the B, the entire base, is the sum of B1 plus B2 because we, we call this as our B1 and we call this as our B2. So let me trace that. This is our B2 and this is our B1. Together, the sum of B1 plus B2 is equal to the entire base b so by substituting the value of b to this formula we now have the area of the parallelogram this for the parallelogram is b which is now b1 plus b2 times the height so for the trapezoid since our trapezoid is only half of this half of this parallelogram then the area of this trapezoid would be one half the area of this parallelogram. And since this B, we said is B1 plus B2, so this becomes one half. Instead of B, we use B sub 1 plus B sub 2. 1 and 2 are subscripts, so we call it B sub 1, B sub 2. So that's the B times the height. Which brings us now to the formula for the area of a trapezoid. So we therefore say that 
the formula for area of trapezoid is A equals one half the sum of the bases B1 plus B2 times the height. That is now the history behind this formula. We do not just, mathematicians just did not wake up and realize there's already a formula from heaven. They derived this formula using this process. For the kite, the sides are not parallel. There are no parallel sides. But these consecutive sides are equal. This side is equal to that side. This side is equal to that side. So how are we going to use the slicing technique that we are talking about in order to find the formula for the area of this kite? So what we are going to do is we are going to cut this kite into two triangles. So we have two triangles now here. What we can do is we'll use our knowledge of triangle to find the area because we know how to find the area of the triangle. So we have this kite and we cut that into that part. Now for the kite, let's call this as our diagonal. This is also another diagonal. So, for our notation, let's call this first diagonal as our diagonal 1 and this line segment as our diagonal 2. So, in our triangle, therefore, this length, the, let's, let me draw it like this. So, from here, Going to this, that is our D2, D sub 2. That's our diagonal. So this length is our diagonal, which you call as diagonal 2. What do you call this height of the triangle? Notice that this is the original diagonal 1, but we cut that into two equal parts. So that means from here going to here is just one half of the diagonal. So this is just one half of the diagonal one. One half of the diagonal one. Now what's the area of a triangle? The area of a triangle is A equals one half the base times the height. So area equals, let's copy the one half. What's our base? Our base is this, that's D sub two. And what's our height? Our height is one half that of d sub one. So the area of the triangle is therefore equal to one half times one half is one fourth times the product of the two diagonals. Let's call it d sub one times d sub two. I just arranged them in alphabetical order and numerical order. But this one is not yet the area of the kite. This is just the area of the half of the kite because, remember, we cut the kite into two equal parts and we try to find the area of this triangle. So if this is just half of that area, then the area of the kite would be twice this. So the area of kite is A equals twice of this area of the triangle, twice of that. And then simplify. Two times one fourth is one half times d sub one times d sub two. That is now the formula for the area of a kite. So this kite area is computed by one half the product of the diagonal. So if you know this diagonal and that diagonal area is one half the product of diagonal one and diagonal two. So let's have some applications of this. So let's have some examples now. Suppose we have this parallelogram and the base is six meters and the height is 5.4 meters. Remember, our formula for the area of a parallelogram is base times height. So A equals 6 meters 
times 5.4 meters. So the area of this parallelogram is 32.4 meters squared. So this is our correct answer. So let's say we have this parallelogram with a base of 2 centimeters and a height of 0.5 centimeter. So again, area of a parallelogram is base times height. Our base is 2 centimeters and our height is 0 0.5 centimeter. So area is 2 times 0 0.5 is 1 centimeter times centimeter is centimeter squared. So our answer is letter D. Okay, let's suppose we have this figure. This figure is a trapezoid. So remember, our formula for trapezoid is A equals 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height. So area equals 1 half times the sum of the bases 7.8 feet plus 2 feet times the height is this red segment 4.8 feet. So A equals 1 half of 7.8 plus 2 is 9.8 feet times 4.8 feet. We get 23.52. So the area equals 23.52 and then the unit is feet times feet is feet squared. So that's our answer. This time, how do you classify this quadrilateral? You have a pair of parallel sides and these sides are not parallel, what do you call this quadrilateral? Is it a rectangle? Definitely not. Is it a square? No. Is it a parallelogram? The answer is also no, because for parallelogram, we must have two pairs of opposite sides parallel. Here, there is only a pair of opposite sides parallel, as indicated by this arrow. So this quadrilateral is a trapezoid. Classify this quadrilateral. You have these two sides parallel and these two sides also parallel. So we have now a parallelogram. And this tick mark says that all the length of the sides are equal. So this is a parallelogram with all four sides equal. We call that as a rhombus. See you in the next video.